Welcome to everybody whose um, first Zoom meeting this is um, for MDRT UK members and aspiring members and guests. This is the second monthly uh, sharing ideas Zoom. The feedback from last month was uh, really, really good. Lots of good feedback, lots of people wanting to contribute at future meetings. So that's great. Um, what we're doing in these meetings is that we're rotating the host. So um, for actually for hosting today in a moment, I'm going to hand over to another member of my committee, uh, which is Kath, Catherine Goff. And if you were on the last um, meeting, then you will know that she presented a session on that meeting as well. So I'm going to hand over to Kath in a minute um, to host the meeting. Um, to uh, reiterate that um, it is open to aspiring members well, so do feel free to forward the link through to people um, that might want to join within in the team. Um, and we're allowing non-members three meetings before we're asking them to join. So if there are aspiring members, uh, then by all means, send, send the link through. Uh, without further ado, I will hand over to Kath. Morning, everyone. It's great to see so many of you here again. Um, as Sarah was just saying, we've got the a great lineup for you this morning, lots of ideas for you to take away in action with your clients or in your business. I would now like to introduce Troy Collins, who's one of our colleagues from Australia. So I saw Troy present at the top of the table session a couple of months or so ago and thought that um, you may all be interested in also hearing what Troy has to say. So Troy has a passion for helping people achieve their goals and their ambitions through their lifestyle choices. He loves to see people succeed and attain success in the areas of their lives that are important to them. So today he will share how he takes his clients through a process of discovery so that he can understand uh, the direction to take and then they can take complete control of their circumstances and achieve their lifestyle choices. So it's not about the money, it's about what the money can bring in peace of mind and financial independence. Troy has kindly shared some of his materials. So after this meeting, I know Sarah will be sharing those with everybody. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Troy Collins. Thanks for uh, the opportunity to do this and um, for connecting earlier, Kath, uh, after the top of the table uh, meeting. And um, yeah, hopefully uh, I can... Uh, Give you give many more of you an opportunity to uh, learn some new things and uh, and maybe I can learn something from you guys if you after question time and and Jerry hello I uh, saw you see you up in the corner of my screen hope you're well and uh, Sarah thanks for the opportunity and um, Ian keep up the good work and yeah looking very festive there very nice <laughs> but isn't this a great opportunity with regards to obviously the negativity around COVID. Um, we get the opportunity to connect uh, globally this way. So, uh, yeah, I really, really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I do have some origins from uh, the United Kingdom. My father was born in England. Um, I happen to be born in New Zealand. Um, and uh, my, my father and my family moved over to Australia uh, many years ago, well over 30 years ago. So um, I've actually personally, unfortunately, never been to the United Kingdom. I've been to plenty of parts of Europe and Asia and the United States, but unfortunately not to England. So hope, hopefully uh, I can get there sometime soon. Um, my wife is uh, Spanish origins and um, I'll talk a bit more about the family situation uh, shortly. But um, yeah, basically at the moment we're in, in uh, summer in, um, in Australia, I'm in Queensland. So the sunshine state and um, it's around about uh, 30 degrees Celsius um, at the moment. Well, it's actually six o'clock in the evening on Thursday uh the 10th of december so i think you guys are nice and uh look like you're quite cool there a lot of you got jumpers and so forth i don't know what the weather's like there but hopefully it's nice so um hopefully technology works for me and um i'm going to share my screen and uh certain um uh illustrations and so forth just to emphasize uh, the points i'm making the i've been in the business for 26 years now I uh, actually joined the business after my, my father joined, uh, started the business uh, 36 years ago. And, um, and I joined him 10 years into um, him building the business. And then um, basically, it was about 12 years later, um, he was in a position to uh, uh, retire. I was his succession plan. And um, I bought him out of the business uh, commercial arrangement and um, bought him out of the business. And he's uh, been comfortably retired for many years on the Gold Coast. Um, which um, 
I don't know if any of you, I'm sure some of you may have been to the Gold Coast. It's a, it's a coastal part of, uh, of Queensland, just an hour away from where I am in Brisbane, Queensland. Um, so, so early on in um, my career, I decided I didn't want to be transactional um, in regards to selling products. And so uh, basically 24 years ago, I decided to engage in, in what I consider, well, we, we all are familiar with now, I suppose, in regards to strategic advice and strategic advice with an emphasis on fee for service um, rather than commissions. And so the reason for that is I wanted to engage, always been big in regards to goal setting and, and uh, for myself personally and for the business, but encouraging clients to, um, I suppose, dream bigger and achieve bigger outcomes for themselves and, and not just focus again on, on the product side of things. Um, so if I may, I'm, I will now share my screen. So this is um, the slideshow I used uh, a bit in the, uh, well, I used in the top of the table presentation. I've just expanded on a little bit for today's discussion, um, always trying to improve on things. So, so the predominant part of my discussion is basically designing the ideal client relationship. Um, and so I actually believe designing the ideal client relationships around, first of all, you designing the ideal life for yourself. Um, and thinking with that first, and then thinking with the end in mind in regards to the personal outcomes that you want to achieve, and then design, help clients achieve the outcomes. I mean, obviously, you know, when I started in the business, um, my father encouraged me, as I think we all did, um, if I'm going to sell insurance, if I'm going to sell and advise on investments and superannuation, retirement funding, I've got to do it myself. So I established a, uh, a life lifetime and lifestyle plan for myself, which I then redesigned for my clients. And the three key points I take into account with our clients is getting a clear direction in regards to what they want to achieve, taking control of their situation. So basically getting the right structures around them, whether that be legal structures such as trusts and companies and so forth, um, or more so just, or simply just banking structures to help the flow of money uh, flow easier. Um, so ultimately, they can achieve the lifestyle choices that they desire. And a lot of people, I suppose I say, don't know what they don't know in regards to what is potentially, what can they achieve? What are the outcomes that they can achieve over the long run? Um, and so they start fairly simplistic in regards to their situation with regards to their goals. So um, I talked a little bit about who I am. So married to my high school sweetheart. Um, so again, we, we've been to uh, south of Spain um, a fair bit over the years after being, we just had our 25th wedding anniversary um, because her family, extended family are all in the south of Spain. So um, we've been there a few times with um, my immediate family and her family who live here. Um, and so I have three children, um, now 22, 20 and 10. And um, we, we have also, actually I'll come back to that one. And for me personally, um, I love competing in triathlons. So a couple of years ago, I competed in the world championships in Rotterdam um, and uh, just missed the podium and got fourth place uh, there. And then subsequently qualified again for the world champs in Gold Coast and um, got pneumonia a few weeks out. So I was un un unable to compete in that. Um, but I'm the current Australian age group sprint champion for triathlons and uh, my state and state champion for Olympic distance triathlon um, in Australia. Um, and still competing, hoping to get to the world champs um, next year for the half Ironman um, distance. So very much active. That's my, my hobby and my side passion outside of um, business. With our business, I, I, I show you this picture. Um, one of my team members is standing down the hallway there, as you can see. Um, I'm actually at the moment um, standing in my office. I'm standing right here. So my, my, I've actually set up my uh, laptop on this table here. And um, I'm standing behind these, these chairs and, and uh, you're looking at this wall behind me, if, if you can see me at the moment. Um, the reason I emphasize this is I wanted to create a space that we spend so much time in, in, in our offices. Um, my clients come to me in the office. I wanted to create a comfortable yet professional environment. And so I'm fortunate enough to have my wife, who's an interior designer, um, design the space. And we've built a coffee lounge um, space here. So when the clients arrive, they can sit at the coffee bar or sit at the lounge here. We have a good quality coffee machine. You can't see it here, but there's a couple of fridges here full of um, uh, beer, wine, soft drinks, and so forth, water. 
Um, and so um, I wanted to make a, an environment where initially we sit down, we have a coffee, we have something to eat, have a chat. We always have that social aspect with all our meetings with our clients initially. And I wanted to do it in, in a lounge in a comfortable environment. So this is a space that uh, we start conversations. And then in some cases, most cases, we'll move to the boardroom table, which is part of this open space. But it was basically, again, designing an experience for the clients. So if we want to, we always talk about, I suppose, growing our business organically through referrals, but we have to be referable first of all. And so I think, again, that comes back to building foundations in regards to the lifestyle choices we make in regards to eating well, exercising, um, having having free time, family time. I'm an advocate of um, strategic coach and Dan Sullivan. I, I attended um, strategic coach for some years. Um, no longer at the moment, taking some time out of that, um, but a big believer in the time system in regards to having free time, making sure you, you, you create that time in your, in your calendar, um, weekly, monthly, yearly in regards to free time, then focus time in regards to time when you actually, you're face to face with clients and del delivering the maximum value to those clients. And you've got the energy to do that because you look after yourself, but also going back to the environment coming to, that, they're, that it's a comfortable space, but yet professional space um, and delivering that client experience um, every time um, to the clients. So then with the clients, we talk about us as strategic advisors, strategic coaches. And so we think with the end in mind. And so what that means is looking at two aspects, time and dollars. So time in regards to thinking with the end in mind, what, where, when is it that you want to be in a position where you are financially independent? So I'm, I think you guys use the same um, terminology as we do in regards to retirement um, rather than 401ks and so forth in the US. But um, we talk about retirement and being financially independent where you have the choice to no longer have to work because your assets that you've established have de are delivering enough passive income that you have that choice. So going back to the direction, control and choice, you understand and get a clear direction in regards to when that is, and also importantly, dollar terms, what that is in regards to um, cash flow. So cash flow is the key. I'm, I'm a big advocate in, in the fact that, okay, we need to buy assets, but what's the purpose of it? The purpose of it is the cash flow aspect. So it's not about what we earn, whether it be personally in regards to our income or, or, or from assets, it's more about what we do with what we earn. So not about what we earn, but more about what we do with what we earn and be strategic in regards to that. And, and, and understand what the steps are in regards to the goals that you want to achieve as you progress as an individual, as a client, um, and map that out. So I'll talk about that a bit more detail shortly in regards to how we actually map that out for a client. Because the product should be the last part of the process. We're not trying to fit clients to a product. The product, in some cases, doesn't even, doesn't even happen. So we help clients manage cash flow on an ongoing basis. So again, they maximize their outcomes in regards to lifestyle choices for today, but also for the future. So it's important to understand that in regards to what we do as a profession, we're, we're ultimately coaching our clients um, if we're taking a holistic approach towards the advice that we're delivering to our clients. So a coach is, so, so the definition of a coach, if you Google it, is a coach is someone who tells you what you don't want to hear, who has you see what you don't want to see, so you can be who you have always known you could be. So it's going back to, I suppose, clients don't know what they don't know. Some clients don't want to, I suppose, in some cases, hear the truth in regards to their current situation um, and understand. But then what we've got to deliver is ultimately the filling the gap in regards to what is potentially um, achievable for them. Um, but a coach is going to be there to support them and open, have open communication with good intent. Um, for any relationship to work with a, with a student and their, or an athlete and their coach or an advisor and their coach, uh, sorry, the coach and, and their student and, and uh, client, um, there's got to be three aspects. You've got to trust each other, you've got to like each other, and you've got to have mutual respect. So I say this to clients in the outset in regards to initial discovery meeting that we have with a client, the first connection, that whether they've been thinking about it consciously or subconsciously, they have been thinking, do they like us? Do they, can they trust us? Can they respect us? But I also turn it around and say, well, I'm thinking the same thing because we basically choose who we work with. And so there's got to be that mutual trust, like, and respect. And at the end of today's meeting, the discovery meeting, we'll both decide whether we move forward. So it's not just them making the decision, it's both parties because it's a collaborative relationship that we've got moving forward. So 
I believe in ultimately, again, building, not only understanding what you want to achieve personally, but then building your practice or your business and life by design. So again, go going back to doing it yourself first and then delivering that value to the client. Because again, you can't advise it if you haven't done it yourself, if you haven't got the, tr the proven track record in regards to, to what you do. So I'm very much focused on lifestyle for myself and I deliver, deliver it to my clients. And so the clients know that anything that we do is about their current and future lifestyle. And um, again, when it comes back to, I suppose, the proven methods that we've used, um, it doesn't, there's no issue in regards to the fees that we charge. Um, and to, it's actually not generally part of my presentation, but in regards to fees that we charge, we, we charge between, in regards to implementation of a client, new client, our fees range from anywhere from 10 to $20,000 in regards to implementation and ongoing um, advice fees on, on ongoing management of a client is between $5,000 to $10,000 a year. Um, some clients in regards to our higher net worth um, clients, um, higher income clients can be, there are a couple of few clients that are around the $15,000 to $20,000 range. But it, it's fee-based, and but it's delivering. We can illustrate every year what value we're providing to them moving forward and re-engaging that every year. But we've got to understand what the client's dreams and ambitions are um, through that process. So we've developed um, what we call our Collins Financial Group Goals Booklet. And so we want to make it easy for our clients to, under, to see what their goals are. So I'm just going to minimize the screen and bring up by uh, Goals Booklet. Um, Kathy, you can see this goals journal. I can see on my screen or not. Yeah, there you go. Cool. <laughs> um, so, so this is a uh, snapshot of the beautiful Gold Coast, Surface Paradise, um, which is an hour away from my home, but uh, um, we frequent that area quite a bit, obviously, by the quality of the uh, location. Um, and one of our lifeguard towers. So, so we developed this goals journal just off the back of how I wrote my own goals um, starting many years ago. Having little positive comments throughout the goals book. So we've, we've created this into um, a, a, um, a book um, that the client can, can write into. So we, we like that sort of using a pen or pencil and basically writing things down. And basically them developing their dreams. And, and we've got positive comments that you know I've collected over the years from authors and so forth. But have them um, put together what their dream life looks like. Because again, th they start off conservatively and we, we build on this year after year. So I'm not gonna go on every page, but I get them to complete their 101 dreams um, and document you know, ultimately without, just brainstorm it. Don't challenge it, don't think about it. Just, just brainstorm and write all these down. Sit with your loved ones, with your family, your kids, and, and go through a list of the 101 goals that you would like to achieve in your lifetime, in their lifetime. Um, so build on that and then break it down um, in regards to building the plan. So obviously any goals needs to be specific, measurable, achievable, reviewable, time data. So if you ever set goals, you'll use the, the smart goals process. So then from that, we break it down in regards to what are the health goals and what are the short, medium and long term goals that you have there, family, uh, personal growth, friends, um, and then it continues to expand into fund, money, career. Um, and other points that are addressed within that, those 101 goals. Um, I think I like the statement of the year from now, you wish you started today. Um, it, it, it's, it's difficult, but at the end of the day, the amount to, to, to educate clients in regards to starting sooner, and we know it as a profession that the sooner the client starts investing and the compound effect of, of money working for them is quite powerful. Um, but it's a matter of building tools that help you illustrate um, that potential to a client. Um, so ultimately they can build their ideal life and then break it down to their ideal week and how that should look like. And that's where we start delivering some of the time management aspects and so forth. So it's not about product and investing and insurance and so forth. That happens, we, we advise on all of that. We advise on uh, lending and so forth, but it's about getting back in touch with ultimately what's important, what actually motivates them, what excites them. It's not the, the insurance, it's not the investments, it's not the percentage return on investment. And, and a comment, I think I got it from the MDRT was, if, if I can, um, if you underperform in regards to benchmark returns uh, relative to your index, your, your share market, um, but you still achieve your goals, would you be happy? And 
99% of the time clients will say yes. It's not so much important that they get 10, 12, 8% return on their investments about achieving their desired outcomes that they want to achieve in um, regards to their goals. So, so that's just a little quick snapshot of, of the goals booklet that we, we have. And I've, I've provided Sarah and Kath um, with a, a copy of the PDF version of that. And they, if they haven't already, they're going to email that, that to you along with um, these slides. So, so what is strategic advice? So strategic advice and lifestyle planning. Um, I suppose I've broken that down. It's, it's about goal setting um, at the end of the day. But again, thinking with the end in mind and, and developing a roadmap um, to help the clients achieve those lifestyle choices. So it comes back to that holistic approach to take into account their debts, take into account their cash flow, because the most expensive part of their financial equation, I believe, or one of the most expensive parts is, is their debt or financing that debt. And so, um, and tax. So, so basically, I suppose in regards to what they earn from their job and whether we work for ourselves or for someone else, I use JOB, J-O-B, as an acronym for just over broke because once you've paid a third in taxes, and this is our system, and I'm sure you're fairly similar, a third in tax, a third in mortgage or debt payments, there's a third left over in regards to funding our lifestyle. So we wanna take control of that, that cash flow um, side of things, and um, be more impactful in regards to helping a client reduce that tax legally, uh, reduce their debt faster so there's less interest costs. So our processes basically have historically helped clients reduce their mortgage debt, their home loan debt uh, by half the time. And so that in some cases can be hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of interest cost savings. Um, so strategic advice is the solution. The goal of strategic advice is to help clients understand their total financial needs so total financial needs, not just about protecting their family in the way of their estate planning and so forth. There's a whole lot more to it and get and then keep their financial house in order so they can get on with enjoying their life. Because what I mean, particularly as males, we're not so good at multitasking. And so what I encourage my clients to do is to focus on one thing at a time. And so the first thing is family, is the lifestyle choices that they want to to um, do in regards to the weekends, the sporting activities, family activities, and so forth. And then the second thing is basically whatever they do for a job, for a career, because that's they need that cash flow whilst they're growing, or else whilst they have a growing family and so forth. And 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 you can, I suppose, with what I'm saying, I, I work with a particular market, and that's the accumulator market. I have some retirees, but it's predominantly the accumulator market, people building wealth, um, um, executives. Who, ha who have busy careers, professional um, lives, have families. So basically someone like myself, you know, got young families, have a, have a career, a profession, um, but just don't have the time or desire to, to manage their financial affairs. So we become their chief financial officer um, and manage their personal affairs. So we work with mums and dads. That, that's the, the demographic that we work with. Um, and so we're not, we don't generally work with specialists and doctors and, um, and business owners. Um, that's not our market. It's actually mums and dads, but high net worth, income, high income earning um, families and so forth. Um, I've, we've built here a, a wall of dreams uh, for our clients to uh, share their, um, their outcomes. Now, it's a relatively uh, well newly renovated office space, relatively new wall here. Um, so we're building on it, but this is a bit of a snapshot of it. So when the clients walk into our office, so sort of just off to the side is the, door, the entrance to the office. Um, one of the first things they see is the lounge, but then the other thing is this wall of dreams. Um, and again, it's part of the experience. I mean, it may seem a bit, um, what's the word, um, un uh, unusual um, to have this sort of thing in your office, but we wanted something different that, that creates conversation. So whether it's when they come in or whether it's when they leave, look, seriously, just about every time we're engaging in conversation around this wall. And so we're encouraging our clients. It's, it's about experiences. So we've got clients um, who went over and walked the Camino Trail in, in uh, Northern Spain, uh, the Northern Lights in Norway, I think it is, um, a client who carried the torch um, for, a, for, I think that was the Sydney Olympics. Um, uh, this is actually my family at uh, Lake Como um, in Italy. Um, we've got families who went skiing, went to New Zealand um, and uh, Hong Kong. Uh, there's other uh, ski trips in Canada and so forth. So it's about sharing, well, this is what it's about in regards to you delivering lifestyle experience where you can take your family skiing to Canada um, and uh, yeah, go and see the Northern Lights. 
Uh, I sponsor a cycling team. This is by Australian kit when I race for Australia. And um, this is some of my team here. So we turned our professional photos into, um, into little uh, car caricature caricatures. So um, this is me. We have uh, my, my two dogs. This is, well, this is my wife's dog and my dog, a Kelpie and a Cavoodle. Um, they also visit our office, um, uh, particularly, particularly the Cavoodles here sort of most days. And again, another different thing. And so, so although it's about the relationship with the client, this also is an impact on the client. Um, the clients love having the dogs here. My cavoodle love just will just go up and sit on someone's lap. I mean, obviously you've got to be selective, but 90% of the time the clients um, have no problem with it, but it just creates a, a whole different environment when you've got a professional office and you've got a dog there that's going to come and sit on your lap whilst you're in an environment where clients most of the time will be a little bit uncomfortable and nervous about you know, what's about to be discussed and so forth. So we want to make them feel relaxed and, and again, have a different environment. Um, so going beyond transactional advice to strategic advice. So like I say, the last part of the process with the client should be the product. So the products are just the tools to help achieve the lifestyle choices the clients want to achieve. So strategic steps that we take, as, as per the statement, strategic advice considers every aspect of a project of the client situation. It takes a holistic view of a client situation and addresses their total needs, both now and in the future. So that's why I'm talking about time and dollars, thinking with the end in mind, working back from there. So we know what they want to achieve in the future. Then we want to work back from there and see what they've got to start with today and then fill the gap. There's, there's always, well, generally, there's always a gap in regards to their planning needs. If there's not, there's a matter of enhancing the situation or protecting their situation if they've built wealth already. Um, and so we've got quite a few clients in that regard where we're protecting wealth because um, they've done well in business, they've retired, and now we've got to protect that. So it's, it's a value proposition based on ongoing advice. So it's an ongoing engagement, ongoing relationship with the trust, life, and respect factor where we're coaching them. Um, mentoring them. And I think we don't really, I mean, I, I know it took me a long time to really appreciate the impact that we are having on clients. And it's not until you ask for that feedback from client, clients, how much you appreciate um, how much they do rely upon us to a point where they ask us you know, in regards to the next purchase of their car for the next holiday, how they're going to fund it um, and so forth. Because we know, and I'll show you a tool that we use shortly, we know intimately what their situation is but it's not high maintenance, hard work in regards to understanding that. Um, but ultimately keeping clients on track towards achieving their goals. So there's joint accountability where, again, I, we talk about being collaborative in regards to the relationship that we have with them. We are their chief financial officer on a personal basis. Um, just like a business does, they need to manage their personal finances like a business as well. So they're accountable, we're accountable. We're doing this together in regards to this whole process. Um, so... We have a, um, a process around the strategic advice model that we use. So I, I have this also in a, this, is, this presentation um, is through a software called Prezi. And um, you know, I have this diagram where you can click on it and it shows each section individually. Um, but where I talk through this in my initial discovery meeting with a client, um, where we focus on the, our program, which, which we've named it, the Strategic Lifestyle Program, because one, it's strategic, it's lifestyle choice funding, and it's a program. It's a program process that we go through. So first of all, we've got to get clear on the goals. Well, then the level of wealth the client wants. Everyone's different in that regard. We've got to personalise it. The level of security they want to achieve. They want to protect their, their assets, protect their situation as they continue to grow. With that, it's that circled by the direction control choice. And then with the clients, we start with that discovery builder. So in understanding what the outcomes are that they want to achieve. So your fact find process. Um, then we move to the strategic blueprint. So we don't present the full comprehensive advice document, the compliance document that we have. Um, this is a strategic blueprint. So illustrating, again, the steps they need to take. Compare what well, we actually compare. If you put in place what we're recommending, um, and compare that against what they're currently doing, we can basically show them the value add that we're providing. And that's why there's no question in regards to the fees that we charge, because we're showing them the profits that we can deliver. And you've got to do that as a, 
as a, as a coach, basically show what value you can provide. It may not be tangible in regards to you buying a, a property or a car and so forth, but it gives them confidence moving forward and it gives them the ability to, to control their situation. Because as we know, a lot of our clients feel out of control in regards to their financial situation. So we want to put them back into control. Um, then we present the comprehensive strategic strategy paper or report, implement the advice that we're implementing, to, um, complete once it's all in place, complete a strategic overview, so post-implementation, because we are delivering advice in regards to um, lending, uh, banking products and so forth, uh, we want to make sure everything, including investments and insurances are in place as we originally advised through steps two and three. And then finally, the ongoing um, strategic success system, which is just the ongoing service package um, relationship model. And the reason I emphasize the relationship is that we plant the seed um, in the discovery meeting uh, in regards to our referral program. So we have a client relationship management program, which is basically engaging with the client and, and uh, making them aware that this is how we do business through referral. But more importantly to them um, is ultimately how we're gonna manage their help them manage their affairs moving forward. Um, and so clients want to know, you know what are the steps because they don't, they don't know what is involved with dealing with a financial advisor. Um, and so we want to be clear on that. So some of the tools that we use to, to help us in regards to be very efficient in regards to the way we manage our client relationships is we have a track to plan or tracking to plan um, cash flow and debt management um, tool. Um, so uh, we have a couple of tools that we use, and one of those is um, we refer to as Prospera, um, available here in Australia. So what it does is enable us to build a, a, st a strategy paper um, in regards to illustrating key outcomes uh, year after year, but we track them monthly. So again, just like a well-run business as a good coach, it's not set and forget. It's not saying, okay, this is the plan, we'll see you in 12 months time. We track that month to month. So this here is showing you one page of our track to plan report that they receive every month. Um, it's not time consuming. We've systemized it in our office in regards to per client in regards to tracking their plan, but we track their, their private debt. So their net situation, uh, the other pages to this monthly report are tracking their, their private investment debt if, if they have those investments, superannuation, consolidated um, values and so forth. So, so private debt, investment debt, we generally don't use margin loans uh, these days. Um, investments, so again, whatever investments they are, we're neutral in regards to what assets they may hold in regards to property, shares, businesses, managed funds, and so on, um, because we're not getting paid for the product um, purchase, the product sale. Uh, we get paid as a fee on the advice that we're, we're delivering. And the, and the fee's not around performance. Um, it is about, I suppose, again, that strategic advice we're delivering. So we illustrate their net situation before superannuation. And ultimately, we want to ensure that that um, orange or gold uh, or yellow, whatever color that is, um, actual line is tracking ahead of the blue line, um, the projected. So this is what we've projected in regards to your strategy um, and how you're tracking month to month. So, so we're tracking them in regards to their cash flow, how they're managing cash flow to reduce private debt as the primary goal. So going back to tax, uh, debt and lifestyle, how quickly can we get rid of that debt? Um, we want to fast track that debt process. And, and you can see just in this example here, you know, over six months, yeah, this particular client dropped their debt by a fair bit. So $12,000 over six months. So it's again, that fast tracking leveraging their debt situation. How we do this is we, we have what we call our Collins Financial Group Wealth Portal. So it's an online data-fed um, tool that the clients can use on their desktop, um, iPads, um, but also their phone. So it's an app um, that clients can download and it basically data feeds everything in one place. So it data feeds bank accounts, property values. So we have online property values through our online um, valuation tools here in Australia. Um, car values, home loan balances, investment loans all feed into this. So we're working with live data. Um, we can't, there's no transaction occurring on these platforms. It's just information, um, but we're able to feed that live data into our system, um, including property and investment data. Uh, tax information is there, so we're able to engage with their accountants and share that tax information and digital document signing um, can be completed through that as well. So it's just about getting, I suppose, smarter um, with, the, with the technology that you have available to yourself. Um, one thing that's happened recently, unfortunately, we, we've lost, we, we're losing a key member of the team um, at the end of next week, just before Christmas. Um, she's taking a career move um, in a completely different direction. 
Um, and so she she was managing a lot of the strategic advice um, that we delivered to our clients. So we basically, rather than deciding to replace her immediately, um, we enhanced our technology and we've basically done certain things to save a lot of hours of, of um, person time um, with more efficiencies around the use of technology. So we'll see how that goes, but um, there, there's plenty of opportunity to be work smarter rather than harder or you know, invest more money into people. I think it's important to have the right people there, but if you can make better use of technology as well. Um, some of the things I shared at the top of the table also was, was managing the strategic advice process and, again, engaging with tools that work for you as an individual, as a business owner, and, and then sharing that with your clients. So, you yeah, know, for example, um, some of the tools we use is our goals booklet. And so there's a, um, uh, I showed you that earlier. Um, the best self journal. So there's a, um, there's a picture of a best self journal. So I use that. We use that daily in our um, team huddles. And we deliver this to certain clients. So we're selective in the clients that we deliver this to. So I think I sent a link in my email um, to Sarah and Kath as well in regards to that best self journal. Um, and then various other spreadsheets in regards to um, expenditure and goals and education spreadsheets and so on. Uh, I also like to use the five minute journal, um, which is an app um, that you can download. Um, it's just reflecting or planning your day ahead with, with reflecting on how things, how, how positive things are in your environment and basically setting some targets for the day that you want to achieve. It takes, as it says, five minutes to complete this journal in the morning and then another five minutes in the evening, but I just find it's on my phone and it's just, I can do that in my time, take some quiet time for five minutes in the morning and five minutes in the afternoon. So, but then regards to, I suppose, the, the strategic part of what we're delivering to our clients, you also need to consider who are your ideal clients because the, the ideal clients, um, first, first of all, who are they? That's basically the benefit of working with the ideal clients is also for your team, because our teams can get frustrated with some of our lower end clients um, who demand a lot, but aren't connected in regards to that relationship side of things. So we, we have just sold off a large chunk of our ideal, sorry, our non-ideal clients, um, which is ultimately going to free us up significantly in regards to time. So seriously, it took me a lot, a lot of years, and I'm sure some of you already have done this, to decide to release my, my staff of the responsibility of managing um, low-end clients because um, they can be demanding. So the benefit is if you find the right person to buy it, there's a lump sum that you can get back into your, your business, um, whether that's to you know help you pay for some things you want to do or pay down some debt or whatever it may be. But it more so importantly frees you up to make sure then you can deliver to your ideal clients um, the service that they deserve. So you want to give them an experience, but if you're getting distracted dealing with your non-ideal clients, um, that's a pain for you, pain for your team, and a pain for you. You're going to lose ideal clients. And so we had found that we're just getting too distracted by these non-ideal clients, so we've sold them off um, to another party who wanted to grow and, and continue to acquire books of business. Um, so we've kept our, our top clients. Um, fees versus commissions. So have a structured program around how you charge, but ultimately make sure you're delivering the results um, and, and uh, that, that the clients deserve. Um, don't be transactional. Focus on the relationship with the client. Build systems around delivering great experience so they talk about you. Be referable. Um, design your business to shape your life, first of all, and then um, the client and buyer achievements, you'll be achieving things together. Um, and that, that's, again, the wall that we have is, is sharing those experiences. I've got pictures, like I said, of my family up there, pictures of all the clients and so forth, uh, and we'll continue to build on that, but it's talking about lifestyle choices. And referring to that when you have a discussion with a client um, in regards to other people's achievements, and, and obviously over the years of experience that we've had with all our clients, yeah, there's many stories we can tell, and clients love to hear these stories. So um, I don't know how time is going. I hope I haven't taken up more than I... Uh, was allotted, but uh, in conclusion, um, make sure what you're doing is productive and enjoyable. So focus on the things that are most important um, and those things that, that give you energy. Um, delegate, get rid of the things that don't give you, that don't energize you, that make you don't make you happy or don't make work enjoyable. Work, career, your, your uh, expertise, focus on the things that you're uniquely good at, your unique ability, and it'll make life a lot more fun. 
Um, next steps, yeah, do something different. Think of different ways. Obviously, it's a great time of year to be reassessing what you're going to do in 2021. COVID 19s changed the way we do things. It's great that we can connect globally now. Um, it would be nice if we can get together next year um, at MDRT. But do what you do so well that they will want to see, sorry, that they will want to see it again and bring their friends. So continue to do what you do so well that people get excited, they talk about you and become raving fans um, and engage with you on an ongoing basis. So I, I have clients from when I started this process 24 years ago, I still have clients who um, are engaged in our processes, um, who continue to um, who continue to uh, refer us clients and we're now getting to a point where they're retiring um, and retiring more comfortable, comfortably than what they had ima ever imagined. Um, and it's a whole new stage in, in our um, professional business life and, and uh, it's exciting. So I hope that um, gave you some um, new ideas and thoughts and um, some, uh, something to think about for the, for the new year. But I really do appreciate the opportunity and uh, I'll, I'll leave it there for Sarah and Kath to take over. That's wonderful, Troy. Thank you very much for sharing with us today and for extending your day by uh, staying on for us. I'm sure that we've all taken something away from this session. So sadly, we don't have time for questions, but like I said, we will be sharing um, Troy's materials with you all. Um, and I'm sure Troy will be happy for you to get in touch with him directly if there is anything that you would like to know.